You ready, Bruce? My producer asks, moments before we go live. Y you bet, I said, but it's a lie. I'm not ready. Not after last week's fiasco. How could I be? I checked my mirror for any faults in my makeup, suck in my gut, then walk out on stage to a live studio audience. Enter music. The announcer introduces me. I glance down at my monitor and cringe. The producers make me out to be that sleazy game show host from the days of old. Polyester and all. The camera cuts to me, and we're live. Alright, I'm happy to be here. Hope you are too, I said, doing my best Bob Baker impression. Let's bring out this week's contestant, shall we? I'm looking at the camera, as if asking the folks at home. And then, cue the audience. Let's make a deal with the devil. This contestant takes to the podium. He's a paunchy, middle-aged man, casually dressed, with broad shoulders and a generous chin. The camera follows him to the podium. Meanwhile, the audience is going berserk. Cut to me. Knock it off! I tell the audience playfully. They hush. Peter McNamara, tell us a little bit about yourself, why don't you? Cut to Peter, who's wiping his sweat-soaked forehead. Well, Bruce, back in high school, I was leading quarterback for the Mater Day Monarchs. State champs, two years running. These days, I mostly sell insurance. Divorced, no kids. Plus, uh, saving the best for last. I'm a lifelong Chargers fan. Crowd cheers. All right, Peter. Are you ready to make a deal with the devil? He was. Great. Then let's bring out Damien, shall we? Cue creepy music. Damien appears out of nowhere and is standing next to Peter. Tell me, Peter, I asked. Do you know the rules? Peter nodded, nervously, all the while glancing at the extremely tall man who appeared out of nowhere and is now standing next to him, wearing an outlandish devil suit. Great. So, Peter, tell Damien and the rest of us, what is it you most desire? Just remember, cue the audience, the devil's in the details. Peter is shaking like a leaf. His head looks like a well-polished bowling ball. Well, Bruce, he says, I've given this a lot of thought. Cut to camera three. What I really want is a big old house on the beach and a big old swimming pool and a car built like a tank. The crowd agrees. Right away, I see the problem. He didn't stick to the script. What's this built-like-a-tank nonsense? Where did that come from? Before each show, I sit down with a contestant and tell them how this works. I tell them exactly what to say, when to say it, and more importantly, what not to say. But the contestants always make a mistake. Every week. One that ultimately costs them their lives. Much to the fervor of the audience. Cut to me. My pearly white teeth are plastered across the screen. All right, then. Uh, let's ask the devil if he's willing to make a deal, shall we? Damien Carey is towering over Peter, grinning like a used car salesman. He looms larger than life, both on and off the screen. Audiences love him. He dresses in a skin-tight red leather suit, pointed red tail, pitchfork, and devil horns. But don't let his ridiculous attire fool you. It's all a distraction. Close up of Damien smiling devilishly into the camera. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Damien asks in his guttural voice. Peter, is it? Hmm. I don't know. You ask for so much. But then, you must ask yourself. How badly do you want these things? Are you willing to give your soul? Peter would. He really, really would. Excellent. Damien sneers into the camera. 
Just excellent. Camera shows Peter shaking his hands with the devil. I take a cautionary step backward, trying my darndest not to show fear. I don't want to end up like the previous host. Who would? I cannot let that happen to me. Not while everyone is watching. Cut to me. Well, that's just, uh, fabulous. So, Q audience, let's make a deal with the devil. Camera zooms in on Peter, who was sweating profusely, palms clenched, open mouth smiling. Cut to me. That's great. If I tell me, say, what's the catch? There's always a catch. The catch is Bruce. He leers into the camera with his don't tell me I didn't warn you look. The car will be big and it'll drive itself. Peter won't have to lift a finger. It'll be a smash. Close up to Peter, who appears as happy as pig in feces. I hate the next part. Damien snaps his long, crooked finger. Poof. Peter is gone. Vanished. The crowd is aghast. They think this is all TV trickery. As the camera cuts to Damien, who's licking his paws and somehow wagging his tail, I recall how the previous host died. I can't get that image out of my head. They're still trying to scrape his stains off the floor, right where I'm standing, no less. But hey, the ratings speak for themselves. Give the people what they want. Damien is doing his devil shtick, and the audience is applauding him. Millions of viewers are watching, waiting for the inevitable carnage that will soon unfold. Meanwhile, the knots in my stomach are multiplying. My left leg is shaking. I'm stone-cold terrified. Cut to a beach house, where a group of partiers appear on the screen, showing off their California tans sipping exotic drinks from colorful straws while they lounge around a large swimming pool in skimpy outfits. Cut to Peter, who's got a drink in each hand and a wide grin stemmed across his face. Peter has become the embodiment of the American dream right before our eyes. The audience rages on. I shudder. My stomach fills with butterflies. I know what's coming. If I screw this next part up, I'll see my career in hell camera cuts to me. So, Peter, tell the audience at home, how's it feel to finally have your dream home on the beach? Cut to Peter. The girls in the background are whooping and hollering and splashing about. I'll tell you what, Bruce, he says, sipping his drink, enjoying the view. It feels great. What comes next will haunt me all night. When the lights are off, and the cameras are put away. Some things in life are impossible to forget, even for heartless Hollywood vampire types like myself. Cut to Damien, standing next to me, too close for comfort. It feels great. His voice sardonic and cruel. I can see you like the swimming pool. You do like the swimming pool, don't you? Screen shows Peter grinning ear to ear. Good. Well then. Damien said, licking his moist red lips. Let's cut to the chase. I think it's time to bring out the new car. Damien snaps his fingers, and a shiny new Hummer appears in the driveway. He's standing next to it, dangling a golden set of keys. I have no clue how he does this, or where those cameras come from. I'm not allowed to ask, which is fine by me. Some things are best unknown. Zoom in on Peter, who's running arms out to the driveway, carrying his fruit-filled drink. The audience oohs and awes. Wide shot of Damien and Peter standing toe-to-toe -to -toe in front of the Hummer. The Hummer glistens under the warm California sun. You asked for a big car, am I right? Damien asked in a bombastic voice. Um, uh, yes, Damien, I did. Well, is this one big enough? P 
Peter nods approvingly. Excellent. So, what do you say, Peter? Want to take her for a ride? Peter does. Damien snaps his fingers. Suddenly, he and Peter are inside the Hummer, seatbelts and all. Peter's drinks are nowhere to be seen. People at home think this is studio trickery. It isn't, which is one of the reasons why I'm scared to death. I don't know how I ever talked myself into this gig. Cut to dash cam inside the vehicle. Damien is outwardly pleased. He leans into the camera. Good, because... Cue to audience. The devil's in the details. They sped off. Peter's head thrusts back, and they tear out of the driveway onto the busy beachside boulevard. Damien is smiling, stone-cold murder searing in his eyes. My hatred for this madman is only outmatched by my fear of him. It's a good thing the camera is off me, because I'm looking like I'm about to puke. Cut to the helicopter cam. The audience watches with glee as the murder spree plays out. First, the Hummer guns down a beautiful young woman on rollerblades, blindsiding her. Her body disappears as the perilous vehicle effortlessly runs her over, blood splashing across its shiny chrome grill, as though biting into a strawberry full of razor blades. The audience is bloodthirsty. They want more, and they'll get it. Cut to dashboard cam. Peter looks worse than I feel. He's freaking out. Damien's devil-may-care grin is stretched across his long, reddened face. You're gonna love this next part, Peter. Multi-screen with dash cam and telecam shows the Hummer veering left onto the sandy beach. One man's head gets crushed like a grape. His brains splatter across his finely chiseled chest. His left eye lost in the many crevices of the crimson sand, while his lifeless body lie flattened on his blood-soaked beach towel. Beside him, a figure rests in twisted ruins with tire tracks tattooed across his sun-kissed corpse. His arm dangles futilely from its socket, like a noose swaying in the breeze. The third victim is caught in the grill of the Hummer. It does a few backflips as the vehicle comes to a halt. Its body falls limply into the warm sand and stays there, blood and body parts and suntan lotion and all. Cut to me doing my darndest to appear casual. Incredible stuff, Damien, I said, wearing my stapled-on smile. That was one heck of a bargain you got there, Peter. Does the audience agree with me or what? They do. Good. I hope each and every one of you at home agrees, too. Cut to Damien, who is somehow back in the studio, standing at the podium next to me twirling his long devil tail, smug as a bug on a rock. His eyes meet mine and fill me with dread. Close up to me, my leg refusing to stay still. Uh, uh, let's see how things are going with Peter, uh, shall we? Wide shot of the beach. The scene is horrific. Police everywhere trying to regulate the manic crowd who moments ago were enjoying a picturesque afternoon on the beach. Camera zooms in on the girl wearing rollerblades, lying face down in a pool of blood. Her neck snapped like a twig, her bleach blonde hair slathered in blood and tiny specks of brain. Multicam shows Peter from every angle as he tumbles out of the Hummer. The cops arrive in droves and have him surrounded. Every bullet in America is pointed at him. He's crying. Phlegm and snot flowing from his ruby-red nose like honey from a razor's edge. The cops are giving him orders, but he doesn't seem to notice. Instead, he's fumbling for his keys, talking gibberish. His keys slip from his fingers. The audience is biting their nails. Multicam shows me trying not to vomit. I'm holding it back as best I can. The show's almost over, I tell myself. I can make it through this. I must. Then, I'm safe. Until next week, that is. Close up of Peter reaching for his keys, and that's the last thing he'll ever do. Multicam shows Peter from every possible angle, 
as a banquet of bullets pulverize his flesh and bone. He flounders like a bloody rag doll as his brains explode into a million pieces, like ravioli hitting a fan. Then he falls flat on his bullet-ridden face. That's the end of Peter McNamara. The audience rages on. Cut to me. I'm ghost white and shaking like a leaf. It looks like Peter got the wrong end of that bargain. Much applause. Cue music. Zoom in on Damien standing over me, squeezing my shoulder, staring down at me with a deranged smile stamped across his demonic face. My leg still twitching, my stomach still in knots. Well, folks, I say, with as much bravado as I can muster. Be sure to tune in next week and try to have yourself a good night. I look forward to seeing you again next week on... Q audience. Let's make a deal with the devil. You ready, Bruce? Ready as I'll ever be. Except, I'm not ready. How can I be? I barely survived season one, and the season finale was a disaster. The poor contestant was burned to a crisp, smelled like barbecue chicken and rotten eggs. Quiet on set. I sucked in my gut. Going live in five, four, three, two. Cue creepy music. Cue to camera one. I get the nod. Hello out there, whoever you are. Hello out there, wherever you are. Welcome to season two of... Cue audience. Let's make a deal with the devil. Cut to camera three. I tease the audience. All right, all right, knock it off. I check my watch. My name is Bruce Davey, and I'm terrified, I, I mean, happy to be here. All right, now that the formalities are over, let's bring out today's contestant, shall we? Audience applauds. Cut to camera four. A generous woman wearing yoga pants and a loose-fitting Leonard Skinner t-shirt appears on screen. She fist pumps across the stage. I roll my eyes. Where do they find these people? Split screen. Tell us a bit about yourself, starting with who you are and where you're from. I look directly into the camera, raise an eyebrow. But please, make it brief. We wouldn't want to keep the devil waiting, would we? The audience oohs and doors. The heavily tattooed woman shakes her head. Good to be here, Bruce. I just love... She flaps her meaty arms in the air. Cue audience. Let's make a deal with the devil. I shake my head, then immediately straighten up. Mustn't stray from the script. Maybe, just maybe, I can save her from a gruesome fate. Cut to camera four. Name's Bertha, Bertha Squires. Folks back home call me Big Bertha. I'm from the great state of Georgia. I like beers and barbecued ribs, and Leonard Skinner played really loud. And I love the Falcons. Let's go Falcons! The audience cheers. All right, all right. I said, signaling the audience to simmer down. Let's get down to business, shall we? I do believe it's time to... Cue audience. Bring out the devil! Cue creepy music. The lights flicker. Minty fog stretched across the studio. An illuminated pentagram flashes above the audience, much to their delight. My stomach sinks into my toes. I hate this part. Damien doesn't take part in the rehearsals. He appears only when the cameras are rolling. Although, on occasion, his deep, guttural voice wafts from the producer's office. Like today, when I overheard them discussing the future of the show. My name wasn't mentioned. Fire flashes across the stage. Damien suddenly appears. The audience gasps. Cut to camera three. Close-up of Damien wearing his elaborate, skin-tight red devil suit. His leather tail swings confidently to the delight of our viewers. Apparently, hell beings get one hour of leisure time a week. And they love this show. How they get this small-scale show in the first place is beyond me. And maybe hell has good Wi-Fi. Damien tilts his black fedora. Then he extends an arm, hushing the audience. Good evening. 
The audience applauds. Damien smiles slyly, showcasing his gold tooth display. So, Bertha. He exaggerates her name. Let's cut to the chase. Tell me. No, tell the viewers. What is it you most desire? Split screen. The devil sneers. Bertha puffs out her chest. Well, uh, Damien, I want what every American wants. The audience leans in. More money? The audience jumps to their feet, cheering. Cut to camera one. I see myself in the monitors. I seem so small and insignificant. Uh, all right, all right, I said shakily. I'm sure Damien can manage that. After all, he is the devil. Enter creepy music. Cut to camera three. The devil's grin sends chills coursing down my spine. Excellent, he says, fiddling his fingers. I can certainly arrange that. Cut to camera four. Bertha starts fist pumping to the audience's delight. But first, he sneers into the camera. You must sign a contract, then it's official. He snaps his fingers. The sound ricochets across the studio like a thunderclap. Suddenly, he's holding an ancient-looking contract made of human skin. I'll be damned if the words aren't written in blood. I shudder. Split screen. Damien hands her the contract. The contestant places the parchment onto the pedestal. A pool of sweat glistens from her gleaming forehead. Damien's eyes sparkle like oceans of evil. She winces as he touches her arm. The devil turns to the audience. What'd you think? His voice sounds like an ashtray. Should Bertha be America's next billionaire? Hell yeah. Bertha's fist pumps. Bertha fist pumps, then raises her arms upwards. Lord, let the money rain over me. The audience agrees. I shrink into my shoes. Could this get any worse? Cut to camera four. Excellent. Damien snaps his spidery fingers. Suddenly, he's holding a quilted pen. Sign here, here, and... He's making a mockery of this. Initial here. Cautiously, Bertha takes the pen. But read through it carefully, because... Cue audience. The devil is in the details. Bertha's round face turns scarlet. Her beady eyes show a mixture of terror and greed. Split screen. The devil licks his lips. The audience holds its breath. The contract trembles in the contestant's hands. Yawning, Damien taps his Rolex, then gives the camera his million-dollar grin. Hurry up, would ya? We're on live television. The audience chants. Sign it! Sign it! Sign it! Close-up of the contestant leaning over, about to sign. Ah-ah. Uh -uh. Damien snaps his fingers. A bottle of ink appears. The contestant dips the pen into the jar of red ink. The audience rises to their feet. The contestant signs the contract. Cuts to camera one. My game show host smile is stapled to my face. Well done, Bertha. You just made a deal with the devil. The audience goes ballistic. Camera pans out. Grinning grotesquely, Damien flies above the audience, whose necks are stretched like cranes. Close up of the devil. I, the one known as Lucifer, the truly wicked one, proclaims. His arms stretch across the entire studio. Let it rain cold hard cash. The audience is delirious. Thunder crashes. Shots ring out. Everyone screams, including me. This wasn't part of the script. But then again, when does Damien follow the script? Cut to camera five. The devil snaps his fingers. The studio dissolves into dust. Suddenly, instead of being inside a cheap hotel studio, we're packed inside a football stadium. The smell of stale beer and popcorn prevails. I stumble as my heart threatens to explode. I clutch my chest, fearing the worst. 
My face turns red, then green, then settles on pale white. Damien gives me his do-as-I-say look, then points up. Looking up, my stomach fills with dread. A lone greenback cascades from the sky, landing on the contestant's head. She snatches it, the stuff set between her breasts. More money falls. Within seconds, the stadium fills with cash. Bertha gets down to business. Damien flies across the stadium, singing. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. His dreadful voice comes to the stadium speakers. Pandemonium ensues. Cuts to overhead camera. Like a plague of locusts, money plummets into the stadium. The sky darkens. The audience is on their feet, seizing the cash. Kicking and clawing, biting and scratching, they line their pockets. The devil snaps his fingers. Almost immediately, the downpour turns torrential. A never-ending flow of cash is dropped into the stadium. The air becomes difficult to breathe. People panic. Cut to camera two. My game show host smile is slipping. With all my might, I finally speak. I've heard of it raining cats and dogs, but this is ridiculous. Meanwhile, my legs are trapped under three feet of cash. I'm losing my equilibrium. Cut to camera three. Damien hovers over the contestant, who's waist deep in cash, and offers her money bags. Fill them up. He shouts. Split screen. Bertha snatches the money bags and starts filling them. Audience members, the lucky ones seated at the top, are chanting. Fill them up! Fill them up! Contestant appears on the jumbo screen. She's desperate, unable to keep up with the rising tides. The storm shows no sign of letting up, and she's getting the worst of it. Cuts to overhead camera. Cuts to overhead camera. The storm turns into an avalanche. The entire front row is crushed. Their screams are inaudible over the madness. They disappear. To my left, a middle-aged man is choking on an Andrew Jackson. His arms and legs are buried. I watch him get trampled as a crowd of money grabbers knock him aside. Cut to camera four. Damien's eyes are dancing as he removes his fedora and fills it with cash. Cut to camera four. Bertha is up to her tits in cash, her big body buried under a mountain of green. Her eyes meet mine. Bruce, make it stop. No more money, please. Her words scatter like paper in the breeze. Cut to camera one. I shrug. Looks like Bertha got a bad deal. I'm surprised at how calm I sound. In truth, I'm petrified. She's not the only one being buried alive. One wrong move, and I'm a goner. Cut to camera four. Damien soars across the stadium. The scoreboard lights up. Bertha's name flashes across the screen. Apparently, she's up by seven. Cut to camera three. Bertha is choking on cash, tears leaking from her frantic eyes. Split screen. The devil, delighted in her discomfort, applauds. You're rich, Bertha. His laughter fills the stadium, plus millions of homes in hell, with dread. Bertha cusses. Damien waves his finger, giving her a no-no gesture. Cut to overhead camera. The audience is in a frenzy. A family of four are holding hands, saying prayers. They're drowning. Quickly, the children disappear. The mother shrieks. The father frantically cries. Someone do something! The devil zooms across the field and lands next to them. Cut to camera five. Here to help, he says. Then he flicks his finger and punts the parents across the field for a pair of field goals. Six points, I proclaim. Under siege, the stadium succumbs to chaos. On the jumbo screen, a teenager with earbuds dangling from his skinny neck is trying to escape. The doors are locked. Someone shoves him aside. He goes sprawling down a flight of stairs, face first. He lands with a thud. A blonde woman wearing gold earrings steps on her back, while her parents snatch the teen's wallet. As they turn away, an avalanche buries them all. 
cuts the camera for her. The contestant is trying to speak, but her mouth is stuffed with cash. She's choking. Her eyes pop as the realization hits her. She's going to die. Close up of contestant. Her eyes disappear. Only her head remains. Then, she's gone. Cut to camera one. I point and shrug. Bertha forgot to read the fine print. I hate the sound of my voice. Overhead camera. Damien races towards me, his pitchforked tail blowing in the breeze. As he approaches, a haggard-looking man, waist-deep in money, swipes his ankle. Damien hoofs him into the end zone. It's good, I say automatically, surprising myself. The home leads by two. Split screen. The audience is frantic. Audience members are jumping over railings trying to escape. The entire field is buried. Money falls like furious snow. I wiggle my toes to make sure they still work. Cut to camera two. I straighten up. There's no sign of Bertha. She's buried. Looks like Bertha got more than she bargained for. A brick of bills smashes the side of my face. I wince. Soon I'll be buried like Bertha. I hope my mother isn't watching. Split screen. Damien grins menacingly at the camera. Yes, she most certainly did. He's playing with his tail. Audience members are trying to free themselves. Their efforts are in vain. The cameras mounted on drones capture everything. Close up of the devil. Damien regards me pitifully, then turns to the camera and winks. Rose. The delight in his voice sickens me. You're drowning. I am. I really am. Cut to camera three. Damien zooms over, lands on my head, perched like a bird. He snaps his fingers. The sound is like a sonic boom. Suddenly, we're back in the studio. So is the audience, the lucky ones, that is, who've managed to stay alive. Split screen. No. He drags the word through the mud. What's this I hear of you wanting a salary increase? I gulp. This is news to me. Cut to camera one. My bald forehead gleams across the screen like a greasy burger. The audience nervously laughs. Cut to camera three. Damien snaps his fingers. Another contract appears. He hands it to me. My hands wobble as I give it a glance. Now that's what I call a race. I say this involuntarily. Damien is lurking over me. Hatred fuming from his unholy pores. When he touches my shoulder, I jump. Smoke fills the studio. Cut to camera three. The devil snickers into the camera. What you think? Should Bruce sign? The audience cheers. Damien hands me his pen, which is surprisingly heavy. His cold, calculated eyes never leave mine. Cut to camera one. Looking nervously at the audience, I raise my arms in a V. Should I sign? The audience chants. Sign it! Sign it! Sign it! My eyes catch the dollar amount carved onto the paper. It's a lucrative deal. In fact, I'd say it's too good to be true. The problem is, I'm too scared to read the fine print. Although the rational part of my mind is screaming at me to do so. All the while, my pounding heart threatens to explode. Making a deal with the devil is the furthest thing from my mind. Cut to camera three. Go on, says the devil. What you afraid of? Sign it! Sign it! Sign it! Split screen. I wipe my forehead. Jeez, they talk about pressure. The devil folds his arms. Reluctantly, I sign. The crowd roars in approval. Cut to camera two. Well, uh, there you have it, folks. Looks like Bertha got more than she'd bargained for, and apparently, I did too. Cue the creepy music. I hope you had as much fun as we did, and I look forward to seeing you on the next edition of... Cue the audience. Let's make a deal with the devil. You look worried, Bruce. My producer jokes, moments before going live. 
Even for you. This gets a chuckle from the crew. Quiet on the set. I'm already shaking in my shoes. Not a good sign. Working for the devil is extremely stressful and dangerous, and certainly not for the faint of heart. Why I took this gig is beyond me. Cue creepy music. Going live in five, four, three. I got the nod. Cut to camera one. Greetings, hell beings and hell raisers. Welcome to the season two finale of... Cue the audience. Let's make a deal with the devil. I wave my arms in the air. The audience jumps to their feet. Someone heckles. All right, knock it off. I serve up my best game show host grin. It looks as fake as this cheap Hollywood studio. As you probably know, my name is Bruce Davey, and I'm the host of... Q Audience. Let's make a deal with the devil. There's a disturbance in the audience. A crew member forcefully removes someone. The commotion settles, and I get the go-ahead. Phew. Feisty crowd tonight. My painted-on smile takes up the entire screen. So does my gleaming bald head. Now, I know what you're thinking. What's the devil got in store for us this evening? The audience rumbles. I shrug. Honestly, I wish I knew. This is true, but I'm sure it has something to do with me spending an eternity in hell. It's right there in my contract, which runs out after this episode. Cue to camera two. So, without further ado, let's bring out tonight's contestants, shall we? The audience roars. And yes, you heard me correctly. Tonight, for the first time ever in this show's defamatory history, we've got two contestants. Audience is on their feet, whooping and hollering. Cut to camera three. Cue music. A middle-aged couple promenade towards the podium. They're dressed like cowboys and walk with a sense of purpose. Split screen. Welcome, both of you. More like, welcome to your funeral. Tell us a wee bit about yourself, why don't you? Cut to camera four. The woman speaks first. Her hair is amber. Her complexion is pale as light beer. Well, Bruce, my name is Tammy. I'm a stay-at-home mom. This here is my partner, Tex. He owns his own gun shop. We live in Austin, Texas, with three beautiful children who are with us here tonight. She points, cue to overhead camera. Two tall boys and a young girl, each dressed head to toe in denim, stand and bow. The audience applauds. Split screen. The other contestant approaches the microphone. He's as tall as an ivory tower, with a voice like a banjo. Howdy, Bruce. Good to be here. He tilts his cowboy hat. His square jaw and rugged good looks give Chuck Norris a run for his money. I salute them. Cut to camera two. Well then, now that we're finished with the formalities, I do believe it's time to... Cue audience. Bring out the devil! Cue creepy music. Cue pyrotechnics. The stage fills with fire and brimstone. Pentagrams slice through the air. The devil appears suddenly, dressed in a shiny new devil suit, tailored specifically for tonight's show. It's jet black and leaves little to the imagination. His pitchforked tail follows closely behind him as he approaches the podium. Cut to camera five. The devil wraps his arms around the two contestants, kissing them both on the cheek. Tex, clearly perturbed, winces, then grudgingly wipes his cheek. The devil snarls, then looks him up and down. Looks like everything isn't bigger in Texas. The devil teases. Suddenly, he's grown over eight feet tall and is looming over the tall Texan. Cut to camera three. The bright lights and furious makeup make me look like a cartoon. What an exciting night this promises to be. Tammy steps forward. You bet it is, Bruce. We've watched every episode. We just love... Cue the audience. Let's make a deal with the devil. Cut to camera three. Of course, Damien boasts. This is Hell's most popular show. And for good reason. He slaps the woman's backside with his tail, then raises his eyebrows mockingly. The cowboy puffs out his chest, fists clenched, daring him to touch his wife again. Whoa, easy there, partner. Damien nudges Tex. 
Tammy is flushed. Don't mind Tex. He's the jealous kind. Oh, really? Damien's tail is now shaped like a lasso. With it, he snags Tammy and pulls her close. Her face turns tomato red. The cowboy grunts, pulling it off with one strong swoop. The audience boos. The devil snickers. I feel sick. If this is to be my last episode, or final day on Earth, I don't want it to be spoiled by this denim-clad dude whose hat is bigger than his brains, or by Damien, who seems extra feisty tonight, even for him. Cut to camera one. I clear my throat. Tell us, uh, Tammy and Tex, uh, no, tell all of hell what it is your beating hearts desire. The audience is on the edge of their seats. Split screen. The Texans exchange doubtful looks. The wife takes charge. Well, Bruce, Tammy says, we don't want anything that might get us killed. Being from Dallas, we were raised with some common sense. The audience hisses. Cut to camera five. The husband steps up. That's right, Bruce. Simply put, we want to be famous for a day. That's it. Then we can write a book and live off the royalties. The audience erupts into a frenzy of catcalls. Cut to camera three. The devil's eyebrows touch the top of his head. His voice slithers like a snake. Is that so? My heart plummets. These Texans are flirting with disaster. If they'd stuck to the script, they might be safe. They were supposed to ask for a lifetime supply of Super Bowl tickets. Easy peasy. Who do these cowpokes think they are? Do they really think they can outsmart the devil? Well then, I say, shakily. I'm sure Damien can arrange that. I raise my arms. What does the audience think? The audience goes ballistic. Cut to camera three. The devil, still towering over the Texans, leans into the camera. Famous, eh? His lips smack against his face. When he touches the dude's shoulder, the cowboy swipes his arm away. The audience boos. Someone teases an egg onto the podium. Someone tosses an egg onto the podium, narrowly missing the contestants. Whoa, easy does it. I spurt out. All hell breaks loose. Cut to override camera. The crew gets busy, disposing of both the egg and the agitator. Cut to camera one. I wipe my sweaty forehead. Tough crowd. The audience hoots. The devil sneers. Silence. Flames flash across the room. People shriek, including me. Close up of Damien. The devil, boasting his gambler's grin, turns to the contestants. Yes, yes, you will be famous, but just for one day. The audience roars their approval. I shudder. Never in all my years have I felt so much animosity for an audience. I'll be lucky to make it out alive. Split screen. It sounds like the devil has a plan. I try to sound cheerful, but cheerfulness is the opposite of how I feel. Cut to camera one. Tell us, Damien, uh, and all of hell, what you've got cooked up. The audience leans in. Cut to camera three. The devil winks at Tammy. Well, I do believe it's time for those two cowpokes to become famous. Am I correct? The audience jumps to their feet, chanting. Famous! 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 Split screen. Tammy looks pleased. Her partner, on the other hand, is showing concern. His shoulders are tense. He's swallowed his bottom lip. Damien dazzles the audience. Famous you shall be. He snaps his fingers. Bam. The studio goes dark. Someone in the audience screams. Tammy gasps. Tex grunts. Cut to camera one. I shrug. Is this Damien's latest trick, or did they finally cut the power? We give the impression that this show is hugely popular, but in truth, outside of hell, this show is a dud. Cable and internet companies avoid us like the plague. Cut to overhead camera. 
The contestants vanish under a cloud of fog. A flaming pentagram floats across the stage. Well, isn't that just dandy? The devil points to the large screen behind the audience. Mr. and Mrs. Cowpoke are about to jump the falls. He snaps his fingers. Then he disappears. My legs go weak. My heart is beating irregularly again. I still don't know how he does it. How any of this works. Suddenly, I'm alone on stage, shaking in my fine Italian boots while the audience grows rowdier by the second. Cameras mounted on drones are pointed at Tammy and Tex, who are trapped inside a large steel barrel with Niagara Falls looming below them. Damien flies across the falls, lands next to Tammy and Tex. He taps the barrel. Ain't she a beauty? The audience hurrahs. The barrel is unlike anything I've ever seen. Although it's huge and probably weighs a ton, it barely contains the two Texans, who are kicking and screaming, cursing up a storm. Get me the hell out of here! Tammy's voice rips to the noise of the falls. And now... Damien frowns. You wanted to be famous, am I right? The audience chants. Famous! 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 Tex pokes his head out of the barrel, cowboy hat and all. Now wait one minute, Damien. That's unfair. We wanted fame, not death. The devil chuckles. The two are synonymous, am I right? The audience agrees. Damien checks his watch. Well then. He slams the lid shut. That's the end of the Texans, as far as I'm concerned. Close up of Damien. What you think? Should they jump the falls? The audience shouts. Jump! 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 Cut to camera two. My insides are melting. I'm petrified. You'd think working with the devil would get easier over time. You'd be dead wrong. Looks like the people have spoken. I hear myself say. The audience continues their chant. Cut to overhead camera. Excellent. Damien says, fiddling his fingers. He looks over the cliff and makes a sour face. Wowzers, that's a long way down. Jump, jump, jump. And so much water. Cut to camera one. My worried, sick face appears on the screen. I straighten up. Once they jump, Tam and Tex will surely be famous. Except, of course, they won't be famous. Not in this world, anyway. They've been duped. Why these people sign up to die is beyond me. Perhaps we've reached a spectacular level of stupidity in human evolution. Cut to overhead camera. Damien's lips stretch across his reddened face. His arms flex like a weightlifter. I'll give them a helping hand. He rolls the giant barrel to the very edge of the cliff, ignoring the banging and hollering coming from within the steel coffin. Tammy, Tex. His lips stretch into a snarl. Prepare for fame. The audience is on their feet. Damien shoves the barrel over the edge. Split screen. The barrel tumbles down the falls, disappearing into the fast-moving water. The audience holds its breath. Cut to spy cam. Inside the barrel, the Texans are shrieking. Their heads and arms and legs collide. Chunks of puke pour across Tammy's sickening face, who's calling Tex every name in the book. And it's a big book. Meanwhile, Tex is like a frog in a blender. His face is green, his nose is broken, blood is leaking from every orifice. There is a loud crash as the barrel plunders underwater. Cut to overhead camera. The barrel resurfaces, traveling dangerously downstream, the audience is back on their feet, fist pumping. Split screen. What troubles me is how the pedestrians and tourists crowding the streets remain oblivious. To them, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Nobody watches or even takes a picture. I'm starting to suspect foul play. Somehow, Damien is controlling this. He's using dark magic. A spell. Maybe none of this is real. Except, of course, it is real. Cut to camera one. I'm trembling. What a jump! My voice ricochets off the studio walls. They'll be famous in no time. 
the audience chants. Famous, famous, famous. Close up of the devil. Yes, yes, an excellent jump, I must say. He peeks over the ledge. Looks like they could use some help. Cut to overhead camera. Damien flies towards the barrel, which is bouncing off rocks and debris. Cut to spy camera. Blood. So much blood in such a tight space. Tammy's hair is in disarray. Her face is beyond repair. Tex swallowed his hat. One of his eyeballs is bouncing like a super ball. His left arm is flapping nonsensically. It isn't attached. Cut to camera four. The devil scoops up the barrel, then flies to shore. When his feet touch the ground, he shakes off the water, cat-like, then glares at the camera. What a jump. He cracks open the lid. Split screen. Tammy spills out. So does Tex's left arm. The audience gasps. Damien applauds. Such valor and swagger. Cut to camera five. Tammy is flopping fish-like, barely clinging to life. Her mouth is full of blood and brains. The devil puts his foot on her head. Say cheese. From out of nowhere, a photographer appears. Snap. <laughs> Damien, looking pleased with himself, is suddenly holding a newspaper. Close-up of newspaper. The headline splashes across the screen. Cut to camera four. Damien shoves the newspaper in front of her face. Looks like Tammy and Tex are famous. Tammy's eyes twitch. Clearly, she needs medical assistance. I'm surprised she's still alive. Her husband's brains are splattered across the inside of the barrel. The very sight of this makes me gag. Tammy tries to speak, but fails. Her eyes are filled with rage. Damien tosses the leftover arm into the water, then shrugs. Sorry about your hobby. Cut to camera two. With wobbly knees, I face the audience. It looks like the barrel got the best attacks. The audience bellows. I continue to talk involuntarily. Gosh, Dolly, look at all that blood. More blood, more blood, more blood. I find myself chanting along. Suddenly, my vision blurs. I clutch my chest. Maybe I'll suffer a heart attack on live TV. Hell waits for no one, I suppose. Cut to camera four. Tammy spits blood on Damien's boots. That will be damned, I blurt. Damien's face twists into a ball of fury. Now, now, Tammy. That wasn't very nice. He crushes her fingers with his boots. Tammy yelps. I was gonna save your long-limbed partner over there. He points. Not anymore. The audience is bloodthirsty. Paper airplanes and rotten eggs whiz past me. I duck just in time. Close-up of contestant. Tammy's tongue is leaking from her bloodied face. She's missing her front teeth. Damien digs his spiky heel deep into her blood-soaked abdomen. I reckon you'll need medical assistance. He snaps his fingers. Suddenly, they're back in the studio. Damien is as happy as a filthy pig. Next to him is Tammy who's caked in blood and gore. Her corpse of a husband spills from the gigantic steel barrel, taking the center stage. Cut to overhead camera. The contestants' children rush the stage. They're delirious. The crew hurry out and drag them aside, along with Tammy, who's rushed to the hospital, where she will certainly die. Now that's what I call speedy service. My voice appalls me. So does this job. If only I'd listened to my mother and got into politics. Damien snaps his fingers, then disappears under a plume of dusty smoke. Cut to camera one. Well, there you have it, folks. That's the last you'll see of Tammy and Tex. But fret not. They had their moment of fame. In hell. The audience is tossing trash onto the stage. I narrowly dodge a projectile. Hope you've enjoyed season two as much as I did. I hated it. And unless the devil strikes me down, and he very well might, I hope to see you this fall for season three of... Cue the audience. Let's make a deal with the devil.
Hard to believe you've lasted this long. One of the camera operators jokes. I gulp. The previous host lasted three episodes. Then, poof. Now, here I am, shaking in my shoes, scared as a child on the first day of school, about to go live for the season three premiere. Ready, Bruce? The producers shout. He doesn't wait for a response. He doesn't wait for a response. The lights dim, the audience shuffles in their seats. My worried face appears on my monitor. Smoke fills the studio. Enter music. We're live. Howdy doody, hobgoblins and hooligans. I wipe my forehead. Phew, what a long, strange trip it's been. The audience remains silent. My name's Bruce Davies, the longest lasting host of... Cue the audience. Let's make a deal with the devil. Overhead camera. It's Devil's Night. The audience consists of ghosts and goblins and creepy-looking creatures. The clarity of their costumes troubles me. Then again, they're probably not costumes. Camera one. Alrighty then, what do you say? Should we bring out tonight's contestant? The audience shrugs. I yank my collar while delivering my best Bob Barker impression. Let me repeat the question for those of you at the back. Should we bring out tonight's contestants? Cue audience. Audience applauds. Now, that's more like it. Cue creepy music. Camera four. A great hulk of a man clad in a bizarre superhero costume runs across the stage, flapping his arms in the air. His muscles ripple as he moves. The audience roars. The contestant, who's covered head to toe in tight-fitting spandex, is showcasing a palette of perfect teeth. His cape is yellow. The rest of him is orange. There's a sinister-looking logo on his chest, V-shaped, with a bloodied eyeball in the middle. Camera two. I point. Yikes. Wouldn't want to meet this fella in a back alley, if you know what I mean. The audience boos. All right, all right, knock it off. Split screen. I turn to the contestant. Tell us about yourself, starting with this strange costume you're wearing. Camera five. The contestant standing at the podium leans down to reach the microphone. Well, Bruce, my name's Tyrone Jackson. I'm from Jersey City, and I'm here to kick some ass. The audience jumps to their feet. There's a ruckus in the back. Someone is ejected. I sigh. Already, things are falling apart. On live television, no less. Good thing no one on Earth watches this show, aside from hapless few who sign up to die. Well, I shudder. We'll see about that. Camera one. I straighten my tie. Alrighty, I do believe it's time to... Cue audience. Bring out the devil. Cue creepy music. Flames flash across the ominous stage. The audience awes as Damien appears, wearing his classic red leather devil suit and impossibly dark sunglasses. Split screen. Damien regards the large specimen standing before him with contempt. He removes his sunglasses and tosses them to the man, who fumbles them in surprise. Whoops. Damien snickers. A wee bit jumpy, eh? The contestant growls. No, sir. His voice is as thick as an elephant's trunk. He grunts. Then to my surprise, he crushes the sunglasses with one hand and tosses them aside. The audience gasps. Camera one. Words cannot describe my fear. The previous host disrespected Damien. Look what happened to him. Cautiously, I face the contestant. Uh, now that we know each other a little bit better, why don't you tell the devil what your heart desires? Camera four. The broad-shouldered contestant licks his face, then leans into the mic. Bruce, he says, with a simper. I'm here to steal your job. The audience jumps to their feet, chanting. Steal your job! Steal your job! Split screen. Unknowingly, I clutch my chest. My heart is thumping irregularly again. Meanwhile, the audience continues chanting. Steal your job! Steal your job! Damien is enraged, eyes like fireballs. Silence! 
The audience obeys. Close up of the devil. Damien smirks, fingers fidgeting. No, that's more like it. His voice slithers down my spine like warm soup. Split screen. Damien, looking sharply at the contestant, snaps his fingers. A contract appears. He hands it to Tyrone, who's shaking his head. The audience leans in. Damien, contestant says, as if talking to a child. We don't need no contract. He tears it into tiny pieces. The audience gasps. Holy hell, I blurt. Damien grimaces. His pitchfork's tail is flapping furiously behind him. Well then. Damien's voice drops an octave, which I believe to be his true voice. What do you have in mind? The audience is dead silent. Camera three. The contestant rubs his hands. A contest, plain and simple. Camera two. A contest? My voice squeaks. I regard the audience. What you think? Should Tyrone get his contest? Contest! 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 Overhead camera. Damien is seething. Well then, I say shakily. The audience has spoken. The audience cheers. Camera two. But, I interrupt. You know the rules, right? Cue the audience. The devil's in the details. Camera three. Damien crosses his arms. Yes, yes. There shall be a contest. He shoots me a troubling glance. I'm the sacrificial lamb, his eyes tell me. Then Damien spanks the contestant with his tail. To my amazement, the contestant shoves the devil who flies across the stage. Eggs splatter across the stage as the audience grows increasingly unruly. The stage hands clean up the mess. Camera two. My pale face reappears on the monitors. Well, ain't that the devil's incarnate? Shut up, Bruce. Devil snaps. Suddenly, he's eight feet tall and towering over the contestant. You ever touch me again? He digs his bony finger deep into the contestant's well-chiseled chest. All at once, the studio walls disappear. Suddenly, we're hovering high above a volcano. The heat is face-melting. As I get a better view, my stomach sinks. That's not a volcano down there. It's hell. The screams of the dead crowd my mind with terror. Cameras mounted on drones whiz by in a blur. The devil's eyes are glowing red. Well then, he snarls. Let's get on with it, shall we? He snaps his fingers. An old-fashioned school desk appears, with a chair on each end. Damien points to a chair. Sit. I sit. He regards the contestant with malice. Go on, then. Reluctantly, the contestant sits, which isn't easy. The chair barely contains his extraordinary girth. Face to face, with only a small desk between us, Tyrone and I exchange looks. I'm scared stupid. He's gonna make mincemeat out of me. Tyrone, on the other hand, is searing with adrenaline and full of confidence. Your job is mine, he mutters through clenched teeth. I shudder. Meanwhile, Damien is now dressed like a referee, wetting the whistle in his mouth. The contest is simple. Arm wrestle. Best two out of three. The audience erupts. Damien hovers over us. Go on then, lock hands. We do. My hand disappears inside Tyrone's. He squeezes. The pain is egregious. I'm left-handed, he boasts. But this shouldn't be a problem. The devil shrugs. The audience leans in. Who's ready to rumble? Damien asks the bloodthirsty audience. The audience goes ballistic. Now, wait one minute. I try unsuccessfully to free my hand. Damien places his cold, clammy hands over ours. And... Go. 
He blows the whistle. With one quick swoop, Tyrone snaps my arm like a twig. The audience boos. I cry in agony. My shoulder is broken. My hand hurts like hell. Clearly, I need medical attention. Damien grins. The contestant is up by one. Tyrone flexes his muscles to the adoring audience. You're next, Damien. The audience gasps. The devil sneers, placing a hand on my shoulder. Immediately, a surge of supernatural strength arrives. You okay, Bruce? The devil teases. You're not going to lose your job on live television, no less, to this despicable dingbat in tights, are you? I can't tell if he's being ironic or just plain mean. Probably both. Damien isn't finished. Not to sound offensive, but... He flaps the contestant's cape. What you supposed to be, anyway? Captain Steroid. The audience chuckles. Tyrone tries to crush my hand, but with my newfound strength, he cannot. And go. Damien blows the whistle. Split screen. The audience is chanting, but I don't make out what they're saying. I'm busy fighting for my job and my life. Grunting and groaning, I edge the contestant's arm towards the desk. He's stubborn and refuses to give up. Our arms are locked. Back and forth we go. Sweat stings my eyes. I panic. He's overpowering me. The hairs on my hand brush the desk. My arm is bending in all the wrong places. My grip tightens. Muscles explode from my biceps. With every ounce of strength I have, I force his hands to the desk. The audience boos. Camera three. Will you look at that? Damien gloats. Didn't see that coming. Tyrone's glaring at me. He knows I'm cheating. In a flash, he leaps to his feet, but Damien forces him to sit down. Going somewhere. Tyrone is about to speak, but thinks better of it. This is it, Damien declares. The final countdown. He snaps his fingers. From out of nowhere, the final countdown soars, catchy keyboard riffs and all, sending a surge of adrenaline my way. Then he forces my hand into the contestant's. Now, wait one minute. The contestant cries, then offers his left hand. Fair is fair. He winks. Damien shrugs. And go. The sound of the whistle sends us off. Split screen. Tyrone's grip tightens as he forces my arm backwards, but I resist. Veins explode from my neck as my left arm bends unnaturally. Back and forth we go. I'm about to give in when another surge of strength arrives like cavalry. I grit my teeth. Oh, no you don't. Well, my knuckles crack at once. Tyrone scoffs. Give up, Bruce. Your days are numbered. He forces my arm dangerously close to the desk. I scramble, cursing and kicking and crying, trying every trick I know. But it's no use. Nothing works. I'm losing. My foot finds a latch. What the... Then he hits me, clear as a summer sky. This is all an illusion. Trickery coming from Damien's sadistic and twisted mind. We're still inside the cheap Hollywood studio. None of this is real. Tyrone is growling like a frothing dog, foam fuming from his tightly masked face. You're going down, Bruce. He applies more pressure. My eyes are bulging from their sockets. I can't take much more of this. Without hesitation, my foot finds the latch. I pull the lever. See in hell, Captain Steroid. All at once, the ground opens up, and the contestant disappears into the flames of hell. A furious flash of lightning shoots across the sky. Then, suddenly, we're back inside the studio. And I'm on my feet, staring into the lens of a camera, clutching my chest. Split screen. Damien sneaks me a sinister smile. Excellent work, Bruce. Cunning and creative. I shrug, trying to catch my breath. There's a lesson we've learned tonight. Damien raises his arms to his adorning audience. The devil gets his due. Well, that's enough fun for one evening. Damien tips his non-existent hat, 
then disappears under a cloud of thick smoke, leaving me to fend for myself. Camera one. That's the last we'll see of Tyrone. Unless, of course, he makes it into a Marvel movie. Rotten eggs pummel the stage. Well, I hope you had as much fun as I did. I wipe egg from my face. And I hope to see you next week for another exciting edition of... Cue the audience. Let's make a deal with the devil. Quiet on the set. My worried face splashed across the monitors. Jeez, am I really that old? And we're live. I suck in my gut. Greetings, my name is Bruce Davey, and I'm the host of Cue the Audience. Let's make a deal with the devil. Camera one. Gosh darn it, folks, we've done it. We reached the end of yet another season. Who would have thunk it? Someone in the audience shouts. You suck, Bruce! I tip my non-existent hat. Yes, I do. I have something in common with your mother. The audience boos. Profanities drop like bombs. Anywho, we've got a special show planned for tonight. I pause for suspense. After scouring the galaxy far and wide, searching for the perfect guest, the audience leans in. Please put your hands together for tonight's guest, hailing from the land of moose and hockey sticks. Cue Canadian Anthem. A dill pickle of a man with unkempt hair and watery eyes approaches the podium. He's wearing a lumberjack sweater and jeans so old, it's impossible to tell their true color. Camera three. Clearly he's drunk. His speech soars like hockey pucks. Thanks, Bruce. Good to be here. Watched all your episodes, yes sir. Including the one where your pants fell down. I saw your little wiener too, I did. The audience was stunned. Camera two. I shrug, not having understood one word the man said, except the wiener bit, but I digress. Alrighty then. Let's start with your name, and where you're from. Can you do that? Split screen. The contestant nods politely. Yes, boy, my name is Pete. Uh, Pete Taylor, from St. John's Newfoundland. I am, uh, what are you at? The audience is scratching their heads. I don't blame them. The man's accent's thicker than a ten-pound moose steak. Whoa, simmer down, partner. Contestant chuckles. The contestant chuckles. I sure, he yanks are a bit slow between the ears, eh? He winks. The audience boos. More F-bombs are dropped. Split screen. My jaw falls to my feet. I'm dumbfounded. The last thing I want to do is screw up the season finale again. Um, let's bring out the devil, shall we? Cue creepy music. The lights dim. A fiery pentagram floats across the stage. Then, poof. The devil appears out of thin air. He's dressed in a tuxedo-style devil suit with fancy red stitching and shiny black boots. The audience jumps to their feet. Damien salutes. Good evening. How's everyone doing tonight? The audience hollers and hoots. Excellent. Damien turns to the contestant, regarding him with disdain. A new fee, huh? Overhead camera. The contestant looks him up and down. Hey, you're some nasty, what? Where'd you get that suit? Walmart? The audience chuckles. Damien sneers. I bite my bottom lip. The contestant stands on his tiptoes. How's the view up there? Damien growls. Flames flash from his furious eyes. The audience gasps. Alrighty then. I intervene. Pete, please tell the devil why you're here. In truth, he's here because no one in the U.S. signed up. Literally, Pete's the bottom of the barrel. Camera 4. The contestant rolls up his sleeves, revealing a tattoo of a lobster swimming in a sea of freckles. Oh, sure, he said languidly. I ran out of new for Jews. The audience is cob-smacked. Split screen. I do a double take. Excuse me? Pete huffs. What? 
Hard of hearing, are you? The audience roars. Damien shouts at the director. For the love of Satan, can we get a translator? Pete makes a cuckoo gesture. That's your bride, eh? My anxiety is skyrocketing. Trouble is brewing, and I'm smack dab in the middle. Damien's voice drops an octave. Listen here, you little twerp. Show some respect, or I'll cut off your head and stuff it down your throat. Capiche? The ground trembles as he speaks. The lights flicker, and a sense of doom wafts over the studio. I trip into camera one, breaking the lens in the process. The camera person swears before disappearing backstage in a fit of rage. Whoopsies. The contestant blurts. Camera two. I straighten up. Pete, you'd better repeat yourself. What is it you truly desire, but please speak slowly. Camera four. The contestant makes a chugging gesture. Screech. Powerful stuff. Puts hair on your chest, yes sir. The audience cheers. Split screen. The devil snarls. Liquor. Are you telling me you want liquor? Aye. Whatever ails ya? I exclaimed. Shut up, Bruce. Damien forks his tongue. Yes, yes, you shall have your liquor. Your new features. Boxes of screech appeared next to Pete, who was wide-eyed and visibly excited. That's more like it. He reaches for a box. Halt. Everything stops. Nobody breathes. You can hear a pin drop. First, you must sign the contract. I can't just give you the damn screech, can I? Damien produces a contract made of human skin. Pete shakes his head. Nah, a new violent a good old handshake will do you. Damien grimaces. Fine. Have it your way. They shake hands for an uncomfortable length of time. Pete fails at overpowering Damien. Instead, he's sent flying across the room, crashing into a stack of boxes. Grinning coyly, Damien flexes his muscles and does an evil dance while the audience cheers him on. Satan! 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 Meanwhile, Peter opens a bottle of Screech and takes a swallow. He returns to the podium, bottle in hand, and offers the devil a drink. Camera two. I groan. What does the audience think? Should the devil have a drink? Overhead camera. Drink! 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 The devil blushes. Well, twist my evil arm. He snaps his fingers. All of a sudden, we're in a seedy nightclub, which reeks of urine. The room is dimly lit and lined with human skulls. Plumes of smoke sift languidly through the thick, stale air. We're cramped inside a booth. An unopened bottle of Screech, plus three shot glasses, greet us. The bartender arrives. He's a vampire, with fangs protruding from his ashen face. He's tall, thin, and shockingly handsome. Damien, he hisses. How wonderful to see you. It's been too long. Damien groans. Hello, Sergio. The bartender wipes the blood off the table, drops an ashtray, then scampers away. Pete opens the bottle of rum, pours three tall shots. His eyes meet mine. Come on, Bruce, have a grog. Nervously, I step out of the booth. The floor is sickly and gross. Hey, sorry, I say sheepishly. I'm on the job. You sue yourself. He hands Damien a shot before downing the liquor. Ugh. Damien spits fire, narrowly missing Pete, who's pouring more shots. They drink. The devil grimaces. Bloody hell. The bartender is watching from a distance. He seems terrified. This worries me. Have you ever seen a scared vampire? Trust me, you don't want to. Sergio returns with a jar of insects. Snacks, he says, joyously, before scurrying back behind the bar. All at once, the patrons, vampires as far as I can tell, vacates the premises. The bar empties, 
leaving only the three of us, plus the bartender, who's as pale as a drink of water. Damien stands on the topsy table. Sergio. He slurs. Drinks all on me. He snaps his fingers. The audience appears, filling the vacant booths. Bottles of screech are passed around freely. Pete, clearly enthralled, joins Damien on the table. Now you're getting it? He pours Damien another shot. Cheers. Everyone drinks. I look away, noticing the cameras hidden in the cracks of the walls. I sigh. How the cameras can follow us is a secret I'll never know. Damien belches, Pete matches it, and a belching competition unfolds. I'm trembling, having never seen such reckless behavior from Damien, and that's saying a lot. If he keeps this up, all hell will break loose. I'm about to interject when the door dings. All eyes turn. A she-devil enters, with long legs, swinging hips, and gargantuan breasts. She's wearing a necklace made of human skulls and nothing else. Her tail swaggers as she strolls cat-like towards the devil's booth. Oui. They mean cat calls. As she-devil puts her arms around him, their tongues intertwine in a grotesque display of affection. Well, I've seen enough. I blurt. Meanwhile, the audience is getting belligerent, downing rum like sailors on leave. Pete hands me a shot. The audience turns on me. Drink, 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 drink. Grudgingly, I oblige. Oh, good God. The rum tastes like turpentine. The devil grunts and groans as she-devil whispers naughtily into his ear while stroking his tail. Pete points his stubby thumb. Whoopsie, someone can't handle their alcohol. The audience snickers. Damien turns to Pete, eyes ablaze. You think you're hot stuff, do ya? He grabs Pete by the collar, then knocks him flat on his ass. You're a loser. Same goes for the rest of you. Pandemonium ensues. Bottles bounce across the barroom in a glass-shattering, rum-fueled frenzy. I try to escape, but Damien grabs the scruff of my neck. Going somewhere, Bruce. I... I... My flailing heart is threatening to explode. Damien sneers. Time to teach you a lesson, once and for all. Damien wraps his ropey fingers around my throat. I gasp for air, but my efforts are in vain. My poor excuse of a life flashes before my eyes. Everything goes gray. I'm about to die. My body goes limp. Something crashes. Something loud. My body jolts as I spill onto the rum-soaked floor. Damien is shrieking. His head is bleeding. A broken bottle lay at his feet. Damien grabs the nearest audience member, snaps their neck. A fresh corpse falls next to me. Damien sneers. Who's next? Someone shouts. You suck, Damien. You're fake. Is that so? Damien goes on a killing spree. Slaughtering the entire audience. Necks snap like turkey wishbones. Bodies drop like flies. Thick, crimson blood oozes everywhere. A large man wearing a dress tries to stop him. Damien knocks his head clean off. The head rolls next to me. Eyes open. I gag. Finally, the screaming stops. All that remains are headless corpses and buckets of blood. The smell is vomitous. Damien regards the gore with glee. Heart pounding, I step forward. Now, uh, th that's what I call clearing the bar. Damien snarls as he reaches for my throat, looking to finish me off. Beside us, Pete cracks open a fresh bottle. I reckon the devil needs a drink, yes sir. Damien's eyes light up. Pete pours two shots. Damien downs the shot, then suffers through another coughing fit. Pete pours three more, offering me one, to which I refuse. Damien is enraged. You cheap, no good son of a- As he speaks, flames flash across the barroom. The rum-soaked booth catches fire, 
and quickly spreads. Within seconds, the entire bar is ablaze. No! Sergio steps out from behind the bar and rushes over, yielding a butcher's knife. The blade is long and silver and sharp. You've been a thorn in my side for far too long. Hush, posh. Damien croaks, shoving the bartender backwards. She-Devil, whose eyes dance like shooting stars, starts speaking in an unknown language. Damien, clearly entranced, fails to notice Sergio sneaking up on him. Devil be gone, Sergio proclaims, and with deadly precision, he slashes Damien's throat, releasing a pool of vile black blood. No! Damien drops to his knees. His face twists with terror and surprise. She-Devil joins Sergio. Together, they stab Damien repeatedly, spilling his guts like spaghetti. The sound is sickening. Again and again they stab, gutting him like a pig. Flames flicker from Damien's eyes before growing dim. He collapses. The ground shakes as he falls. Sergio stands over the devil, knife gleaming. With She-Devil by his side, he places the sharp edge of the knife against the devil's bloodied throat. With hate-filled eyes, and with one strong swoop, he decapitates the devil, whose head rolls onto the fire-riddled floor. The head catches fire, then explodes. The body turns to acid, then dissolves into black goop. With much effort, I refrain from commenting. Words escape me. Meanwhile, the barroom continues to burn, cooking fresh corpses like dinner. The smell is abhorrent. Sergio and She-Devil share a mouth-watering kiss that lasts forever. A bomb detonates. Everything fades to black. My body disappears. This is it. My time has come. The Lord of Death has arrived. I hear a voice. It's close. When I open my eyes, I'm standing next to Pete inside the cheap Hollywood studio. The lights are off. The power is cut. The crew is nowhere to be found. With a glimmer in his eyes, Pete offers me a bottle. Ah, what the hell? I take a swallow. Pete slaps my back. You're all right, Bruce. He leaves me with the bottle, then saunters toward the exit, carrying an unopened box of booze. He waves goodbye, then steps outside. The door slams shut behind him. I breathe deeply, trying to calm myself. What the hell happened? Is Damien dead? Am I unemployed? So many questions, so few answers. With shaky movements, I turn to the lifeless camera. Uh, Pete may be going to hell in a bucket, but at least he's enjoying the ride. And Damien? Well, something tells me he's suffering from one hell of a hangover. I dry my water bucket eyes and straighten my tie. Then, using my very best Bob Barker impression, I sign off one last time. This is it, folks. We've reached the end. I hope you survived the final edition of Let's Make a Deal with the Devil.